I don't know, you know, why they, why they selected these countries. I mean, you know, all we know is they identified them and they used the statute uh, to do so. I mean, I, I see, you know, sort of conspiracy-minded theories, you know, presented that these are all countries, you know, they wanted to pick Muslim-majority countries in which Trump corporations don't do business. <laughs> I'm not crediting that because I don't know. We don't know why they, they selected the, these yeah. these countries. You know, it just see. I think that they were looking for a way to make the proposed Muslim ban as legal seeming as it could. And so they found a neutral basis for identifying which countries would cover based on the, the statute that Peter might just discussed. But beyond that, I don't know. Peter might might have some other bit. We don't really know. Yeah. There's no evidence. See, this part of the, a lot of the problem with the order and why I think that they lost in the trial court and the district, in the court of appeals and why they would lose in the Supreme Court is that there's no record. That is, they didn't put forward any record to show these are uniquely dangerous countries. Um, and so that's why we're treating them differently. Um, and, and that's why I think Peter's concern notwithstanding, they wouldn't win in the Supreme Court because after they're asked, you know, uh, you know, why did you pick this country? Their first answer would be, uh, that's an unreviewable executive decision. <laughs> and Justice Kennedy would be like, okay, I don't agree with that, so tell me what your real answer is. Yeah. And they would have nothing. I don't think that they have, that they, I think they have, there's no evidence, there's nothing they can point to about these countries, uh, about that they can um, See, this uh, will always push back on that. So I'm trying to make this very quick. So the, the precedent that's probably most clearly on point with respect to the due process issue that the Ninth Circuit relied on in its opinion is a case called Kerry versus Din. That's a case from 2015. It's an opinion by its concurrence. It's really a controlling opinion by Justice Kennedy. Uh, in that case, you had a U.S. citizen who was applying for a spouse. The spouse was an Afghan national. And the visa for the Afghan national was denied. So the spouse went to court and said, I have a due process right as an American citizen uh, by virtue of my intimate association with my spouse. I have a due process right in getting some reasoned explanation for why this visa was denied. Uh, the only re explanation that was given was that the spouse, who had formerly served as a clerk in a town controlled by the Taliban in Afghanistan, that the spouse uh, had been involved in some kind of terrorism-related behavior, which is covered by about 20 different subsections in the Immigration and Nationality Act. Right. So the, the spouse had said, well, give me a further subsection. Give me, give me a, a specific subsection of the statute, one of those 20, so I can rebut these charges against me. I can show you I wasn't a supporter of terrorism. Justice Kennedy, in his decision, said, I'll assume that the spouse, the American citizen spouse, has some kind of due process rights. I'll assume I won't decide it, I'll just assume it for purposes of her case. But in any case, whatever due process right had was being complied with by the government. <coughs> Why didn't the government have to produce the specific subsection and say, okay, this is what we think you did? Justice Kennedy said, that might jeopardize intelligence sources and methods. We don't want to do that. Uh, and so all you're going to get is you're among the group of 20 vast subsections of the Immigration Act that cover terrorism-related conduct. That's all you get. That's all the individualized assessment you're entitled to as a matter of due process. That's a very lax standard. Uh, there's some process there, but not a heck of a lot. So if that's the precedent, right, then I'm not clear about where Justice Kennedy is going to be. He might find his way somehow to striking this down as a matter of constitutional law, or he might find it to be arbitrary under the Immigration Act. And I'm actually quite sympathetic to that latter view, that the Immigration Act at least requires you to be rational, and maybe at least requires some kind of individualized assessment, even if it doesn't get down to the subsection you're talking about. You can't just say willy-nilly, uh, we're not going to let anyone in from these countries for, you know, X amount of time. 
So I could see Justice Kennedy saying that, but he would have to push the envelope just a little bit because the precedents now are highly deferential to national security interests and the kind of probing scrutiny you see, for example, in establishment clause cases, you rarely see in immigration or in foreign relations.